So deep breath. We're here. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Chautauqua. And I am Reverend Barbara Williams. And it's just such a blessing for each of you to be here, to create this consciousness today and to welcome our guest minister. So I'd like to begin with a welcome song. So if you'd stand and would you join our musician, Janine. Mm -hmm. prayer many of you probably have been when you're here and some of the people that are will be watching in the next month online um, they probably heard what's happened here at Chautauqua and how our hearts have just really it not only the shock but it seemed in violation of what we hold so true here at Chautauqua that this not only is a safe place, but it is a place where people can disagree with great respect and with great courage and with great support. And so I just wanted to read a couple words from our president of Chautauqua, Michael Hill. And if maybe some of you were at, there was a beautiful prayer vigil on Friday night mm -hmm. that touched me deeply and one of the themes was is that when things happen like this, our call is to remember that we're community and to hold that what we're really doing is holding away from fear, moving away from fear, as the speakers did in their prayers Friday night, and holding that we are love. And so Michael says, of few things that just really touched me deeply and he was so deeply affected. I was very close to him and I could see his face and I'd never seen it like that. Um, but we know that we each here and everywhere have that opportunity because this isn't happening just here, is it? It's happening in a lot of places. And so it's our opportunity to keep raising the consciousness of love. And that's what he asked us to do. He said that that the things that we cherish most, he said, have been for a moment occupied by feelings of fear and the worst of human traits, he said, hate. And he said, let's be clear that many of the people that witnessed that today, and I was close, but not, I was just walking in into the amphitheater, so I did not witness it. Um, They were shook to the, our core, that we were shook to our core. But something else happened today that I hope we'll never forget. We saw some of the best in humanity as numbers of people ran towards the danger. 
So he says this for us. The response must be love, of course, and also action from that love. We must return to our podiums and pulpits. We must continue to convene the critical conversations that can help build empathy and respect. And obviously, this is more important than ever. So let's pray on that. So it's just as we enter this time of prayer, we turn to that awareness that wherever there is fear and hate, there is a call to love. And so that call as we become aware in our heart space, that light of love, and in this moment, let's just expand that light throughout our bodies and throughout our beautiful place here in the Hall of Missions so that we fill each other and support each other and then we continue that love, that respect, that honor for diversity and inclusion and we allow it to expand through Chautauqua, holding each of us and allowing that healing and then to all those involved that not only witnessed it, but for the author, Salman Rushdie, and for his family, for his friends, and for all the people around the world now that are concerned about the freedom of expression. Let's just hold that that brings us closer, more connected, and more in community and more inviting our action, more inviting those that are hurting and are feeling like pushing against other people or hurting them, that they are connected and loved to. And so for this opportunity to be that action of love in our communities and in our world, we say thank you, God. Amen and amen. So, this is one of our statements that we say every Sunday, and for me it's even more profound right now, and that's because in the midst of things that don't look like love and God, there we can take our attention to that healing presence. And so let's say that together. There is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life. God the good. Amen. And so we are the choice makers to create that in our world. I just have a few announcements about if you're, this is your first time at Unity. We call ourselves a positive path for spiritual living. And the next three items are things that have been my experience in the 70s when I walked into a Unity Church that it opened my mind and touched my heart and transformed my life in a time that I was miserable, actually, in my 20s, and I found tools. And so we call ourselves a positive, practical, progressive approach to Christianity based on the teachings of Jesus and the power of prayer. And I especially like, and I remember my first minister when I walked in, saying that there were many paths to God and, uh, and that we honor all paths. And so welcome here. And if you'd like to learn more or watch our previous services this summer, that you can go to our website, and it's on the back of all the brochures there, but there's an easy way to remember it. Unity is unity.org that's the international unity website and where you can locate churches in your community and chautauqua chq.org and so we're unity chq.org and so all there's a place that you can can sign up for emails and and also jump into our our youtube channel or our facebook page so i hope you will do that and i hope you will like us <laughs> and pass that on to other people because right now we understand our, 
all of us that have gone through COVID, we are connecting out in the world in places where people can't be here with us. And what a blessing that is. And so you're here at our Sunday service. And our last one is the very last Sunday of this month. So if you're here, I hope you'll come back. And, but we'll still be online. And our daily word meditation is right here every morning, Monday through Friday at 8 to 8.30. And then we have a positive path for spiritual living, a Wednesday lecture. And that is in the Turner Community Center. Now, if you don't know that, if this is your first time, you take the North Bus up to what looks like it's not only a, a community center, but it's also an athletic center, and there is a classroom in it. And remember to take your gate pass because it's actually outside of Chautauqua. So you have to actually leave Chautauqua to get into that building. But the great thing is people from the outside can come and not have to have a gate pass to be there. So I hope you'll join us. That will also be recorded. And I'm going to invite our minister of the week up. Kurt, would you just come up here for a second? And I, I want to read a little about Kurt. Now, I know Kurt because he was a classmate of mine. Oh. And, and, and let's just say something about Kurt, besides that he has a delightful sense of humor and just a warm human being. The first thing he said when he saw me yesterday, he said, you haven't changed in 20 years. <laughs> And so, you didn't accept it very graciously. I did. You have it. I didn't, I didn't accept it because I was going, like, like, let's see, I have a magnifying mirror at home. I would, I object to that, but I appreciate it still, his, his warmth. So he is at North Shore, the unity of North Shore and Evanston, and that's a suburb of Chicago. Yep, first suburb north. Yep. And I just, all the things that you've done, you've you, not only classes and workshops, but you do them on spiritual abundance, speaking authentically and healing relationships. He's a certified facilitator for the Anti-Racism Institute. And he has written, and I've seen your writings in Unity Magazine, Daily Word, and <clears throat> Unity Devotionals for Lent and Abbott. He serves on the board of Evanston Pride, which organizes and supports the LBGTQIA plus community to amplify its voice and educate. So would you just say a few words about what you're going to do Wednesday evening? Sure. Um, so it's only an hour, as I understand it. Um, and that's a long time for me to talk. I, I like short, brief messages. So what I'm hoping is that we can make it a bit experiential. And in Unity, we believe that we have within us the seed of the divine that includes every resource, every, um, every path to guidance that we would need to be able to move forward in our lives in empowering ways. So we'll talk about specifically what some of those traits and characteristics are, and maybe identify one that might be supportive for moving through a particular challenge that you're facing right now, um, challenge or desire that you would want to fulfill. So yeah, I'm hoping so, there'll be some back and forth, a little bit of interactivity, yeah. unless Barbara tells me, no, you need to talk for an hour. No, you don't. OK. No, we love experiential <laughs> here, so. Okay. okay, so we are going to be working. Janine is going to lead us in a song now, and um, then Kurt's going to going to speak today. You know, I'm wondering if that was set for your height. It is. It is so right. when he gets up, <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Or we're just going to see no head talking. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Barbara, Kurt. <laughs> yeah. um, so typically, this is a time when, when there's participation, and I had a different song that called to me today to sing, so I'm just going to invite you to just listen to, to the, the music and the lyrics and that's <coughs> It's easier. 
wedding sail we may capsize. Obstacles surround us, we could run aground, waiting for the tide to rise. Too many times I hung my lyre on a tree, when the world seemed strange. Can you see my head? Show it to us. Yeah, I still have to go get up. Oh, thank you. Our living is our boat. I'm loving that. I, when I came in, I realized. Um, so I'm Robin Kirk from Unity on the North Shore. Just quick introduction thing. Um, I'm I, quite frankly humbled to be here, as I uh, have experienced so far. This is a really well-read crowd, and um, this is a really poignant time to be here. So. When I woke up this morning and heard uh, just this amazing organ music wafting through the windows, pipe organs playing all over town, it feels like. And just I'm in a, a really sacred place, and it's a little uh, intimidating, actually. <laughs> so, um, the title of my talk is Courage to Be. I'm thinking I'm going to have to live into it, like to, just deal with it, Kurt. Um, all of the preconceptions I might have and, and be courageous. Um, our living is our ship. I'm loving that. Living is our boat. <coughs> a boat. A boat. Oh, well, I'm changing the lyric then for you know, oh, okay. <laughs> The way I heard it was living is our boat, because um, living is our ship. Um, and I'm just imagining that we're at a point right now in many of our lives and in our culture, in our world, where the boats feel as though they may be a little bit battered. You know what I mean? They're sort of where there's a little bit more maybe effortfulness that's needed to be able to move through and find that space for graciousness or 
find that, that inspiration or that strength or that depth to be courageous as we move through these kind of troubled waters, troubled times. Um, and so that's what I want to speak to, where, where it is that we sort of discover within ourselves the courage to be able to um, move through troubled waters, even a boat that might be a little bit dinged up right now. Uh, that's the metaphor I took, so thank you for that. Um, I, being somewhat of a perfectionist, um, read everything I possibly could about what was happening at Chautauqua and realized that there is a, there's a book that's selected um, that's sort of a theme for the week. And the book for this week is um, John F. Kennedy's Profiles and Courage, which is amazing and it ended up being very serendipitous because essentially he profiles some incredibly um, sort of, I don't even know what I would say, I guess senators who were willing to stand in integrity, not even willing, but compelled to stand on what their deepest beliefs were at a time which might have been politically fraught. Um, it meant really risking their own careers, their offices, it meant in some cases reputations and families. And so Kennedy goes through and chronicles eight senators who moved through times. And what was hopeful for me is that much like today, there as we look at headlines, as we look at what's happening as we move through this sort of the post-presidency of number 45, and there, it feels like um, there is some peril to democracy, and we don't quite know what that's going to look like moving forward. For me, it was really kind of reassuring to realize that it's not the first time we've been there. Um, historically, there have been other individuals who have stood up on principle, risked everything, and really changed the course of history by their actions. So that that sort of gives me hope. And the questions that sort of arose as I moved through the book are more about um, what the source of the motivation for their courage was. And, and Kennedy sort of addresses that in the final chapter. I want to just share a quote here. For not a single one of the men whose stories appear in the preceding pages offers a simple, clear-cut picture of motivation and accomplishment. In each of them, complexities, inconsistencies, and doubts arise to plague us. However detailed may have been our study of his life, each man remains something of an enigma. However clear the effect of his courage, the cause is shadowed by a veil which cannot be torn away. Um, I love that because it sort of makes room for the human part of us. You know, he talks later about how it would be so much easier if there were like the history book nugget that we take out of that experience where they were just, you know, we put them on pedestals and carved statues and then we almost worship the achievements that they had made or the men and the qualities that they brought forth. But it just, it, this book makes clear that that's not realistic. They had their own motivations, they had their own incentives, they had their own agendas that, um, were part of the interplay that happened in the unfolding of their being able to stand integrity. And I think that's true for us as well. You know, as we sort of reach for places in our own hearts and our own minds where we can show up courageously and be the channel for love that, that Barbara expressed, there are times when we're gonna be able to do that well and powerfully, and there are gonna be times where we're torn and when we don't stand up in the way that we believe we ought to or, or our highest aspirations might inspire us to. And to find a place that we can sort of forgive ourselves for that level of humanity and still know that it, it's not sort of all on our own power. Like our, our life is our ship and our life is connected to something much greater than the beating of our hearts through these, I don't know, decades that we inhabit the planet. Um, so where I want to sort of take that is to dig in a little bit more deeply to Unity's foundational teaching, right? We, we spoke the affirmation of our right today, that there's one power and one presence in the universe, and it is God, the good omnipotence. And that, that teaching, I think, is unique, especially in Christian circles, in terms of what unity is. You know, there is no, in unity understanding, there is no entity or power that is oppositional to that force of good, right? And that's a, that's a hard place to stand when we're coming out of a weekend, like witnessing the evil that happened this week, right? Um, so I wanna make it clear, unity doesn't come from a space where it's like there is no evil. The space that unity come out of, comes out of is that where we see evil and darkness, that's not um, caused by this omnipotent power that is all good. 
the cause of evil and darkness and hate that arises really comes out of essentially fear or ignorance or a mistaken belief in our own identity. We don't fully understand or comprehend that we are part of the allness of that good, right? It's where we start to be fearful about our own lives or our own beginnings and, and that's when um, greed or selfishness or hatred or misunderstanding, all of those evils, all of those sins arise really out of our own ignorance about the truth of these boats that we move through life in, right? The truth of those boats is that they are created out of the image and likeness of the divine. And as we can sort of create spaces in our own understanding um, that allow space and room for the human part of that, when we do sort of fall um, away from the understanding that we have about the truth of our own being, and, and perhaps are being bounced around for uh, in, in those spaces of, of where bad stuff is happening, um, that we can also know that even within that, we have power to change both our experience of it, and even more importantly, the energy and the consciousness that we bring to being, to helping to heal it and create it, recreate it, yeah, does that make sense? So, um, how does that work? I, I write a weekly blog, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, plagiarize myself right here, because I think, um, we, uh, my family, it's been an amazing August this, this week, and my family got together for a reunion for the first time in 10 years. And um, my mother is now sort of the, you can't say patriarch, but what do you call it? When the, well, she's the oldest, she's the oldest and wisest of, of the four brothers that are sort of the genesis. And so we wanted to get the family together while she was still um, cognizant and could, could be there fully and experience people. And, and um, thankfully, because we're spread from coast to coast, literally, the, the family and the generations, there are four or five of them now. And so we came together uh, on my sister's property back in Michigan. And thankfully, um, someone in the family thought to sit down and make out one of those genealogy charts, you know, and I had no idea. I mean, I knew that there was uh, a whole community and a whole sort of academic discipline about genealogy, but I had no idea that there are symbols for a male, female, there are all sorts of different iterations that they can include gay and straight and lesbian and trans and non-gender, all of that happens. And there's also all the way across the way, the way in which their position tells you birth order, there's like an incredible amount of like intellectual understanding of how we are connected, right? But what I understood once we got there is that the real gift of that intellectual understanding, the real gift of knowing that we are all um, arising out of the same bloodline, that we are all one in that way, the real gift was being able to sit down and deeper conversations and getting to know one another more deeply, right? It doesn't happen just, the lines on the chart don't really express um, how it is that we really experience that oneness and, and what that family looks like. And what I kind of came to understand as I was thinking about this talk today is that the same thing is true for humanity as it is for family, right? We can come from, I keep wanting to point to that one power and presence, the slide up there. We can come from an intellectual understanding or, or some sort of faith-based conviction that we are one with all humanity, we are one with all that is, but as long as it sort of remains at the level of head, um, there's not going to be that transformational quality that's going to bring about the kind of change we want to see so that we truly do um, begin to bring through that, that world that works for all, that, that dynamic of love that's going to transform where we see inequity and injustice right, and, and hatred. That, that can only be healed by sort of the integration of head and heart. That can only be healed by our willingness to, because what I noticed about the family reunion is we started planning this thing a year ago. And we all have our own lives spread out across the planet. We've got our own priorities and stuff to do. And we have to make space with intention to sort of reignite or, or even reestablish or establish for the first time these deeper connections with family. We have to give up, um, what's familiar to us. We have to be willing to step out of what we know um, and maybe even the unfamiliarity of, of knowing that, you know, families all have dynamics and it might be that there's some forgiveness work that we have to move into in order to be fully present to one another. But 60 out of the 70 of us were able to sort of make that happen 
to be present for this last reunion. And some of it was just other prayers. I'm not saying that there was any animosity or anything, but um, we had to move outside of our comfort zones and make space for it and be intentional about being together. And I think the same is true for us as a, as a, a human family, right? We have to be willing to sort of step across the lines of what we're comfortable with to step outside of our own comfort zones um, and be willing to forgive, be willing to be vulnerable, be willing to step out with a, with a sense of courage that arises out of, um, where does that courage arrive? That arises really out of um, a conviction that there are greater possibilities before us than the ones that we're present to right now. <sighs> So that's kind of the piece that I wanted to indicate. Where are we with time? Do I have more time to yak or? Yes. Okay. <laughs> 10 minutes. So that's the, including meditation? No, without meditation. Oh, 10 more minutes? Yes. I'm not going to take that long. <laughs> but you can do any way you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, it's, it's, I guess the only other thing that I would say is in terms of um, being able to be present to that which isn't known, to being able to be present to that which we find a fear, especially as we sit here in this kind of really idyllic environment that in some ways has been violated on Friday. Like the, the, the healing part that really moves us forward, that the way that we find the courage is to be fully present to what's most alive in us at a heart-based level, right? Um, and I think that's what happened Friday night as I hear that prayer service described. It's like there was a space to really come forward with what is most alive in our hearts. What is, um, we know, I know that it is in unity vernacular, that's what we would consider a sin, is to be in fear. Because that's when we've fallen away from the truth of being. We know that God's power and presence can move us through any circumstance. But those spaces in our lives where we encounter something that maybe we're not fully present to that power, but that we are feeling some sense of separation or darkness, the space in our lives, the only way sort of to heal that is to move through it and to be accepting of it as a part of the human experience. And to be able to make space for the allness of that is actually how we move through it. It's That's where I think the, the courage to move forward and to stand in the integrity of what we know to be most true, the deepest truth really arises out of a willingness to sort of accept that sometimes we're gonna sometimes we're gonna do it, sometimes we're gonna know it, and, and sometimes we're not. Sometimes uh, we're gonna show up um, less powerfully than we would ideally like to. Yeah. So that's what I would like. I think I'm, can we go into move toward meditation? Janine is gonna <coughs> Janine's gonna set us up with sort of a energy through which we can become more present. And then um, We'll move through what I think will be a process to help uh, maybe identify what's most alive in our hearts, and then also to maybe call forth uh, how we would most like to be showing up, yeah? Okay, so um, I'll sing through parts of it, um, and then you can join in me. I'll, I'll give you a cue. We'll, we'll sing this a few times, and then
relax a little bit more deeply into this beautiful energy that Jesus established for us. And we know that sort of the most effective way to be fully present to the allness of our beingness, at the level of body and mind and spirit, is to begin with body and with the physical. So I invite you to breathe in just deeply at your own pace. And see if you don't notice a sense of expansion as you inhale, relax a bit more fully. And as you exhale, just become more present and more aware of the physicality of your beingness in this moment. you scan your body, notice if there's any place that can relax a bit more deeply, if there's any place that you're holding any tension. Just consciously release it. And without manipulating your breath, but just following the natural rhythm of your breathing, Notice its flow into and out of your physical body. As we relax. And I would next invite you to just turn your attention to what thoughts might be crossing your awareness without clinging to them, but just let them passing through like a cloud overhead. Maybe you're remembering what it took to get here this morning. Our patterns and routines are a bit different today. Whatever thoughts are crossing your awareness, I would next invite you to just be aware of whatever emotions might be evoked by those thoughts. And like clouds moving overhead, emotions shift and change. There's a subtlety of feeling that as we begin to become more aware of it, there's a beautiful pathway through which we can begin to move beyond it. And just as we began with an awareness of our physical body, made this transition now to our thinking and feeling, I invite you now to open your heart that you might transition to um, a more sort of spiritual place, however it is that you experience that. For some, it's a sense of, of brightness. For some, it's a sense of calm or peace. For some, it's just a sense of being in the presence of infinite grace. But it's in these quiet times of reflection meditation when that sense of beingness, that sense of spirit is closest, that the veil is thinnest. And so as we dwell here for a moment in the quiet, with Janine playing softly in the background, I invite you to simply allow the experience of being here now, trusting that spirit, that love, that grace is moving through every level of your being, your body, mind, and spirit, healing and restoring anything which might be out of alignment, anything which is unlike the perfect nature of that godliness that is the very essence of our truest selves. In the quiet, allow spirit to heal, uplift, restore, and renew.
So before we bring this to a close, I would invite you to just return the attention to your breath and see if you can't feel into a nuanced quality. There's a vibrational quality to the field that we've created here, to the consciousness that we're holding, to this receptivity to spirit. See if you can't extend that vibrational quality to the rest of the room. See if we can't feel it filling the room. Whatever your experience of it, of light, of peace, of grace, allow it to expand and extend beyond this room to the beautiful grounds that surround us. know that this is a power that can transcend even space and time so that we can touch the hearts of all those who might still be carrying a wound or a challenge from the events of Friday night. That in our own healing we can truly extend that same energy, that same vibration of quality. So that others might experience it. Knowing and trusting that it is not I, but the I am of us that is the source of this beautiful power and healing and light. So once more, I invite you to return your attention to the pace and the depth of your own breath. And as we return our attention to this space and this time, as you're ready, when you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes and in the meantime, We'll just have Jeanette sort of lead us back through that beautiful affirmation of the power of the I am in us and through us and as us. She just reads the title and infers what is the mute, the perfect music. So, so thank you so much for bringing your message as well for your music. And I feel like just that meditation and the music really helped part of this healing that is going on everywhere here. There's been a commitment that all the different denominations are working with that this week. So it's an honor to be part of it. So this is our opportunity to share our abundance through a love offering. And we have a blessing. I'm going to ask Kelly, our board president, to come. 
open up. Oh, she already has our, our, our basket. And as you consider your gift and our affirmation, understand that our gifts are God energy that move through us. And it's not only our monetary gifts, but it's also our presence here. And so know that with your gift is a presence that you give to this moment and that you're giving to every moment and that we're taking the message that both Kurt and Janine shared with us and we're gonna live that as a gift. And your, your financial gifts also support that Kurt's here. And so that's a real blessing because I've been in ministry and I can tell you it's a lot of work. As many of you know, maybe you're in ministry or you're part of a congregation and you know that it's often a 24 by seven kind of job. And so we just feel so blessed that Unity of Chautauqua is part of our mission to bring a minister and to have that experience, that time and this beauty and this consciousness and also to share it with us. So this is our blessing, and I invite you to say it with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful for just feel that. Feel the gifts that you are, that that is moving through your families through Chautauqua and through our world. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so within Chautauqua, unity of Chautauqua is. And so we bless these gifts to do the work of love. And so we say thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. So now, this is one of my favorite parts. <laughs> we're going to stand and we're going to sing. And this is the first part. It's only a small part of the song, We. The big part, and I sang it in our congregation when we had new members, and we'd weave them into the congregation. And actually, there's more verses that are about diversity and appreciating all the ways that we all weave together our unique expressions of God. And then we're going to sing the peace song after that and the prayer of protection. So would you join now?
for the us being our whole world. And knowing that, by the way, many of you might know this already, but Buzz Aldrin took this prayer and it sits on the moon. So every time you see the moon, think of that prayer as just shining. And it was a full moon this morning when I walked early with my dog. And so that, that prayer is just embracing us in every moment. So together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Thank you, God, and thank you for being here and joining with us.